on, George. Come on, George. Oh, God, no. Verstappen's got him. No, wait, wait. He's got a penalty. No, wait. He's got a penalty. No, wait. He's got a pe he's got a penalty. No, he's got a penalty. And he's got a penalty. And he's he's got a penalty. And Oh, God. Oh, God. Even the steward's penalty machine has broken. Or well, someone needs to call an exorcist. Help. <laughs> Yes. <laughs>Hello everyone and welcome back to another brand new video and today I have to start on a somber note because unfortunately I have witnessed last night one of the most bullshitting races I've ever seen in all my years of watching Formula One which dates back all the way to 1988. I would say this race was a catastrophe in the same vein as Abu Dhabi 2021 of course we're not going to go down that road because you know there's lots of other people that still do but I'm just saying it was absolutely appalling absolutely appalling and I'm just reaching the stage now where Formula One is going down a road I don't think I can follow it anymore I don't think I can go down that road anymore this was clearly an attempt to try and get some excitement for the last round of the season at Abu Dhabi because the championship was already over. It was clear. Either that or the stewards all had Alzheimer's and they need testing because it was an absolute joke. It really was. I've, I've never seen so many bullshit penalties and stewarding decisions which really didn't make much sense. As I say, in all the time I've been watching Formula One. Now, as a footnote, they did interview Toto Wolf, and he said that all the uh, penalties applied to his team were accurate and correct. So just like a broken clock is correct twice a day, they did manage to get two penalties completely right. Lewis, unfortunately, did uh, jump the start. He did sort of then try and slow down and get going again, but unfortunately that was a penalty for Lulu which we will talk about more in a moment. So let's just have a look. I've got some bullet points that I wrote down. Of course, we had the start when Verstappen takes the lead after Russell dropped down to third place. Then the safety car was deployed on lap one because Ocon and Colapinto got into a little bit of a collision, which also involved Nico Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg gets a puncher. Hamilton, of course, gets that poor start. And Hulkenberg was blamed for causing the collision. Then we get Albon hit by Stroll, which was classed as a racing incident. Anyway, the safety car was in on lap four and it was go, go, go once again. On lap five, Liam Lawson spins. On lap eight, Lance Stroll is given a 10 second penalty and then he retires the car. Now, <laughs> that did make me laugh, but as was explained, uh, if he didn't um, actually take the penalty, then retire the car, then the penalty would have been transferred to the next Grand Prix. So... That was, that was a good call there, I think, from everyone involved. A very good call indeed. So Lance took his penalty and then he retired the car and then went off to play some tennis. Anyone for tennis? <laughs> On lap 12, Liam Lawson then got a 10-second penalty then on lap 14 i mean it reads like a shopping list it really does yes there's bacon there's bread there's uh butter whatever you want it just reads like a shopping list it really does anyway Lap 14, Lewis then gets a five-second penalty for the full start, which, as Toto said, was actually valid. Also, Toto said at the end of the uh, race, uh, to the Channel 4 broadcast, broadcasters anyway, that he predicted that something was going to happen quite catastrophic between the drivers very, very soon. Yes, it was a little bit of breaking news, a little bit, it certainly put David Coulthard off guard when he said, wowzers, he wasn't expecting that whatsoever. So what he's saying is the drivers are basically at the end of their tether, and I can understand why. I can understand why. The FIA needs to be cut off from the ankles. It really is. The power of the FIA now is just, it's just too much. It's just too much, and it is ruining the sport, the sport that it's supposed to be governing, it's ruining it. Yes, it really is. There's just too many things going on now behind the scenes and it needs to be capped off at the ankles. It really does. Control has to be brought back 
to not the not the drivers because that's a silly idea you don't bring control to the drivers because they'll just want any rule they want that's not the idea but control has to be brought back to maybe a very small dedicated team there is so many people now i understand in the fia that it's ridiculous it really is it needs to be streamlined it needs to come down to just a small team to be in charge of formula one and liberty media especially need to keep their noses out of formula one because they on, on the whole are ruining it as well so anyway on lap 34 because uh, nothing else really happened from there on my highlights lewis then gets a puncher and signs gets a puncher as well because of oh surprise surprise a broken mirror which was left on the circuit now this made me so mad i almost almost threw my remote control at the television it was a mirror for fuck sake does does any of the stewards, perhaps they weren't even born back in, I think it was 2008, when Felipe Massa got hit in the helmet, which actually hit his eye as well, by a piece of debris on the circuit. So does a mirror not class as a piece of debris? A really, really sharp mirror that Valtteri Bottas has already run over. Now, it's basically, they were saying that he probably didn't even see it, and he wasn't informed by anyone in the team that there was a mirror sitting there in the middle of the circuit. This just seems absolutely crazy to me. It makes no logical sense whatsoever. If you, if you look back to the times when they've had safety cars, full safety cars, for someone just slightly going off the circuit. Remember Lance Stroll, I think, a couple of years ago? He was literally, he was nowhere on the racing line. He was clear off the circuit. Nope, safety car comes out, safety car comes out. Safety first, don't forget, everyone. Safety first. Well, where was the fucking safety first in that situation with having a mirror on the circuit? And, of course, drivers ran over it, and they all got punches, which, once again, could have been very, very dangerous if they happened to have that puncher at full speed going down the straight. They could have ended up smacking to the barrier and maybe getting killed. Yeah, but what does the FIA care? Well, clearly by the stewardship in that race, they don't give two shits. Absolutely don't give two shits. Well, there's a mirror. Uh, oh, mirror. Well, just just leave it. Just leave. Someone will run over that and, and, and it'll, it'll crush it down and it'll be fine. It'll be fine. That's the only logical thing I can think that the stewards looked at that and, and said, oh, no, just, just leave it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. No, it wasn't fine at all, was it? And it could have caused a serious injury. Now, as Battery Potash ran over it, you could see it shattered into a million pieces. And as I say, any of those pieces, if the car was behind him very, very close, trying to also for a pass, although he was trying to get out of the way of another car, faster cars going, but if one of those behind him had come up and pieces of that glass up into that helmet, it would have been absolutely disastrous. And then the FIA would have had hell to pay. Hell to pay. They really would, because people would have said, why the fuck didn't you sort that mirror out? And why didn't they sort that mirror out? Because I just don't get it. I just don't get it. I, the, the decisions by the stewards in that race made absolutely no logical sense whatsoever. It was just absolutely crazy. Formula One is still a very dangerous sport. It is possibly about as safe as it can be these days, but it is still a dangerous sport. And there is no way that a mirror should have been left that had fallen off one of the other cars because they'd had impact earlier. I can't remember who it was. I think it was a Williams. There was no way that should have stayed on the circuit with, with, with nothing. There was absolutely nothing. There, there wasn't a yellow flag. There wasn't there wasn't any notifications to the drivers to say, oh, well, oh, there's a mirror. Be careful because Battery Potter just ran straight over the fucking thing because he wasn't even told that it was there. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. So lots of cars got punctures and had to come in for pit stops, of course. This was on lap 34. Then on lap 35, the safety car came out because of all the cars that had got punctures. Amazing that. Imagine how that knock-on effect happens, isn't it? By having a mirror on the circuit. I just, I don't know. I just don't get it. So, yeah, I, why they left that mirror out there is just beyond me. It's just stupidity squared as far as I'm concerned. And the other thing I, I, I just like to talk about is all the drivers, and I'm going to, I'm not going to name any names. I've said this many times in the past. I haven't got any affiliation to any of the drivers. I don't 
love any of them. My, my closest relationship is probably to Lulu, but uh, we'll get to that in a minute, and everyone knows why anyway. And that's about it. That's about it. But on the same flip side of that, I don't hate any of the drivers either. I, I wouldn't go into videos. Yeah, if they've been a plum, I will call them out in videos and say, yeah, like Lando Norris. Lando Norris is a loser from the one the other week. Yes, that's true. And I still stand by that. I will still make videos like that. But as for hating any of the drivers, why? What's the point? What is the point of hating on drivers? They're risking their lives for our entertainment. The last thing they need is for us to hate on them. You know, it's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> so to all those out there that do, get a life, please. Just get a life because it's, you know, it just really isn't necessary. Really isn't. So, yeah. But I want to say to all the drivers, now there's been con some controversy over Max Verstappen and George Russell saying, uh, you know, that he's all sweetness and light. And then he goes to the steward's room and he basically said he fucked him over. He completely fucked him over. And fair enough, I'm not going to talk about that in this video because there's, I've seen a lot of videos posted already about the subject, so I'll leave them to talk about it. What I wanted to talk about the most was the absolute bitching from all the drivers out there. The tell the telltales. It wasn't. It wasn't even primary school stuff. It was kinder garden school stuff oh he's done that he's done that he gives you all give him penalty give him penalty oh look what he's done look what he... i just couldn't believe it these are supposed to be the top sportsmen in the world on in the world and they were behaving like absolute kids absolute kids and if all if those drivers were my kids i'd have slapped every single one of them round the head Yes, I know. Now people will come up and say, oh, no, you can't say that. Yes, I can, because I'm of an age where that did some bloody good. So, yes, if that had happened, I would give give the, 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 the cheeky little whippersnapper. Come, the, but, come here, come here. Give you a clip round the ear. I got plenty of clips round the ear when I was young, and I'm still okay. I can't hear very well, but I'm still okay. <laughs> uh, but, yes, so it's just... Oh my God, the moaning, the bitching, the constant. Oh, this is unfortunately the society that we live in now. It's all, I'm going to tell on you. I'm going to tell on you. Oh yeah, don't do that. Don't do Oh no, no. Oh, I'll tell you what, it gets right on my tits. Right on my nipples. It really does. Gets right on my nipples. Just go back to... Uh, the 90s, uh, that was probably the golden era of Formula One. Uh, if you discount, the, you know, the the glorious 60s, but of course a lot of older people would remember the 60s because it was a long time ago. I think for people of our gener generation, you know, even of my generation, I think the 90s was probably the golden era. Would you have had any of that happening with the drivers? Complaining about, oh, give them a penalty. No, no, no. It just wouldn't have happened. This is just all these bloody, what do they call them? Millennial Zs or whatever. It's it's that generation now where just everything is just social media, social media, social media. And I, I wash my hands of it. I just I just wash my hands of it. If, if this is the way the world is going to form, if it is, then I can't be done with it anymore. I really can't because cool heads should prevail in certain circumstances and you shouldn't be there bitching on the radio about oh yeah look what he's just done look what he's just done yeah i'm gonna tell i'm gonna tell on you. S kindergarten crap that's what that is kindergarten crap absolutely diabolical i was i was ashamed to watch the race hearing all the moaning i really was anyway we moved on to um lap 40 and we had a restart after the safety car, of course. And Norris tried to take the lead from Max Verstappen and failed pretty miserably, I have to say. Pretty miserably. And then on lap 40 also, Perez spins. I, I do believe he slammed the safety car, wasn't he? He wasn't even up to speed. Yes, Perez spins. Hulkenberg uh, is out. And then Perez retires as well after the spin. And that's before the restart uh, after the... Uh, Safety car, which came in on lap 42, I do believe. Yes, lap 42. Okay, so then we move to lap 44. Yes, which is quite, quite ironic, considering that's uh, Lewis Hamilton's driver number. 
<laughs> I just thought that was funny. And Lando Norris gets a 10 second stop and go penalty for apparently not slowing down under the yellow flag. I, <laughs> I, I just lost the words. Not not just a, not just a drive through penalty, not just a five second penalty, not just a 10 second penalty, but no, a 10 second stop and go, which anyone knows means they've got to come into the pits at um, the speed limit Take 10 seconds and then go out again with the speed limit. So actually you're talking about a good 25, 30 seconds depending on the length of the pit lane. That's the penalty. And of course then uh, Lando Norris dropped down, way down the field, way out of the points. And um, it was just, I mean, imagine if, if that was a championship situation. I mean, it wasn't, obviously. But imagine if it had been. The outcry would have been far worse than anything that happened in Abu Dhabi in 2021, wouldn't it? It would have, oh my God. They'd be talking about that for the next 20 years, let alone just 10, next 20 years if that had happened. I believe it was just absolute bullshit. Absolute bullshit. I, you know, I don't even think the stewards could explain the penalty. Why it was a stop and go, a 30 second. I haven't seen a, a, a stop and go penalty in Formula One for. <sighs> It's got to be years. It's got to be years. I mean, usually the highest one they do, isn't it, is a, is a 10 second added to your time or 10 seconds you've got to serve when you come into the pits. I think that's the most severe that they've done for quite a while. So, but to have a stop and go 10... It's just crazy. I was like, what, what, what the hell is this bullshit? Really, what the hell is this bullshit? Then on lap 47, Lewis gets a penalty and he has to serve a drive through in which he said, can I park the car? <laughs> now, now, Lulu. Lulu, yes. Um, i just like to say, I think Lewis Hamilton has finally realised that um, he's reached the end of his career. I'm not going to say that he won't be in a Ferrari next year, but what really concerned me the most was when he was being interviewed by Ariana Bravo yesterday, and he just came out and said, I'm just, I'm just so slow. I'm just, I'm just so slow. And I was like, whoa, 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 Lewis, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you, what are you doing? That is the worst possible thing you could say when you're just about to move to another team like Ferrari to say, I'm just, I'm just so slow. I just, I just really am. Now, if anyone looks at that interview, look right at the end and you will notice that Lewis Hamilton winked to Ariana right at the end. That was very clever psychology from Lewis because basically by saying that, that means that if he was slow in the race, then, you know, he justified it already by saying that he was slow. But if he ended up being really quick, then the reverse psychology would also have worked. So that was very, very clever from Lulu. I saw it right at the end. As anyone who watches the channel knows, I'm a very keen study of body language and right at the end it's just, it's a tiny it's a tiny little half wink out of his right eye he gives like that it's a little tiny wink he wasn't winking at Ariana I know that for a fact just to, when he said he was so slow just a little tiny wink that you know as I say very clever reverse psychology for him but terrible for Ferrari the boss of Ferrari uh Vassar isn't it Frederick Vassar, he must have looked at that and gone oh my god what the hell do we do now Looking at Lewis, he looks he looks finished. He looks absolutely finished. I don't even think he wants to be around Formula One anymore. I think he's done. And this is the problem. You reach a certain age in life and you realise that what you were doing before is not only not as much fun anymore, which is clearly what's happening to Lewis, because I don't think I've ever seen Lewis in his career ever say, can I park the car? Maybe he said it once or twice before when he's been right at the back, he's had, he's had an accident or whatever. But to physically say in the Mercedes car, can I park it because I'm I'm just done. I don't think I've ever seen Lewis say that. Not ever. So it's just, I don't know. But as I say, you reach that point in life when you realise that what used to be fun, which is driving a Formula 1 car, is no longer fun anymore. And the inevitable reality of that also is... If you start to not be as fast and competitive 
as you were in the past. And that's what's happening to Lewis. I mean, you know, nobody wants to be not as fast as everyone else. I mean, that's just that's just life, you know. If you want to be, a, if you're a top sportsman, you always want to be the best in your game. But when this happens, and clearly this happens, this has happened to Lewis. Um, it's not good news. It's not good news. I I don't think it's going to happen. I think there's probably only about a two percent chance of it happening. But I think there is a two percent chance that Lewis could actually retire at the end of the season. I say I don't think it's going to happen because the contract with Ferrari. It's probably water tight, and it would probably cost it would probably cost Lewis millions of dollars to get out of it. But I just think he's finished. I really do, and you can see it in his face. You can see it in his body language. You, I mean, he was he was bigging up George yesterday after qualifying because he knew he just he just didn't have that car. Toto has been very protective of Lewis, obviously because of past glories they've had, where he's saying, "Oh, well, we didn't we didn't quite give him." the best car for the job that's that's very pragmatic of um toto i have to say uh, it's, but i know behind the scenes he would be knowing that that's not the issue at all because george russell is doing a very good job with that mercedes and lewis isn't because as i say lewis he's just he's just finished he really is he's just finished you know his career in formula one is over i mean Maybe he should do a do a Alonso and take a couple of years off and then come back. Maybe you feel refreshed and ready to go again, like Alonso did. I don't know, because Alonso did that, don't forget. Alonso, just before he left, he was looking very, very tired. He was looking very, very downbeat. Came back super refreshed. That edge seems to have gone off. That shine seems to have gone off Alonso recently, I have to say, again. So maybe Alonso is going to retire again. I don't know, but, you know... Maybe that's what Lewis needs to do, but at the moment, it, it, I just it pains me to see him out there. It pains me to see him out there. It really does because that's not that's not the Lewis Hamilton of old. It's it's far from it. It's far from it. It's very sad to see, but time waits for no man, and eventually, when your time is up, in you know, in your career, in your sport, then. It's time to call it a day. It really is. I personally will be very sad to see Lewis lead the sport. As I say, he's been a great ambassador for Formula One. Everything I say he's done in the car has been simply magical. It really has. Really, really has. The only issue I've ever had with uh, Lewis is everything he says outside of Formula One, which 99% of it I don't agree with. But apart from that, Lewis has... He's been a great ambassador for the sport and he's been in the sport a very long time and it may be time for him to finally admit not just to Ferrari or other teams, to himself that those good times aren't going to come along anymore. There's no way at Ferrari he's going to be a patch on Charles Leclerc. He really isn't. He's, he's going to, the first half of the season, he's going to have the normal problem of trying to get used to the Ferrari car because he's never driven a Ferrari F1 car before. And I understand that they are completely different animals to all the other... I mean, all the other cars are completely different animals, but the Ferrari especially is a different animal. So he's going to have to find a huge problem there. And so for the first half of the season, he'll get away with it because he'll say, oh, I'm just getting used to the car. Once he reaches the half distance, if he's still ending up in 12th and 15th place, which sadly was what Sebastian Vettel ended his career, you know, basically getting, that it may be time for him to call it a day. He may retire at the end of his one-year stint at Ferrari, if the contract allows, which, but I mean, Frederick Vassar may be able to, you know, get, get around that, get around the contract. He's a very, very good friend of Lewis Hamilton. So if anyone knows what to do to get out of the situation, Frederick Vassar is, is the man. He really is. Anyway, so there you go. On to lap 57. Maxi Boy then wins the race to get him some more points. Still not going to hit that magic 500 like last year, though, but he's going to get up there. And then, of course, um, we've got to say a special congratulations to Guan Yu Zhou, who gets points finally for Sauber. Almost the last race, but not quite. He's done it. And also a special mention to Valtteri Bottas, who is no longer going to finish 23rd in the championship he has jumped to above Logan's privates 
So congratulations to Lance, to Lance. Congratulations to Bottas for getting above Logan's privates. Twenty. He's going to finish twenty second in the championship. Grand Yu Joe. Uh, I think he's jumped four places, hasn't he? Because he's actually got points. He's actually got points. Yes. So well done to Grand Yu Joe. It's a great result. Of course, if you look at it in principle, it was because of all the other cars getting bullshit penalties that managed to. But points are points. If you cross the line, you get the points. Then you deserve them. It doesn't matter what the other people are doing. That's their problem, not yours. So well done to Grand Yu Joe. Just just a shame that he's finishing off the season and won't be back in Formula 1 after that. It's just a real shame. But anyway, there you go. And Russell got a five-second penalty at the end. I've just got on my notes here. I can't even remember that one because by that time, I think I'd fallen asleep or almost thrown my remote control at the TV. So there you go. That is the race. Fantastic. As I say, I've never seen so much bullshit in a Grand Prix in all my life. If you want to talk fabrication, if you want to talk fake, yeah, you can forget Abu Dhabi 2021. You can just look at this Grand Prix. If if it wasn't at all, then whoever was stewarding, I understand they got a new steward. I'm not quite sure how to look that up. Whoever was stewarding that race, he needs a serious rethink because it, I think he comes from the Michael Massey school of stewarding. I'm sure he does because some of those decisions were just like Michael Massey used to make. So... I'm very curious. I'm very curious what is going on. All I can say is the FIA, Formula One, I mean, the racing's fine. The, if the drivers can get on with the racing, the racing's fine. There's some really good battles in the field. But the FIA themselves are destroying their own sport from within. They really are. And as I say, they need to be chopped off at the ankles Power has to be given back to the teams, as I say. Not the drivers, that's a silly decision. Power has to be given back to the teams because at the moment they've got none whatsoever. And things are only going to get worse because the more that these stewards get away with all these penalties, then it'll just become ridiculous. And we'll, we'll end up like NASCAR races. Sorry, American people viewing. But we'll end up like NASCAR races where every single other lap you'll get the yellow flag come out and the safety car and the race will just always keep stop starting because that's what will happen eventually if these penalties keep getting applied then the races are going to just last forever just like they're doing NASCAR because it's just ridiculous it really is anyway as I said at the beginning never have I seen so much bullshit in all my life I really haven't anyway that was the Qatar Grand Prix there's not a lot else you can say really I mean, I know some people in the comments of some videos are saying, oh, they, they thought it was brilliant. Well, yeah, you probably did. But in terms of actual racing, well, there was very little. Very little, because most of the drivers were contending with getting penalties or yellow flags or safety cars or... Oh, my God. And it certainly wasn't a classic, from my understanding, of a classic. Certainly not. Certainly not. And the circuit, once again, I just, I just don't like it. I just don't like it. It's just another... High speed, squiggle, just, oh my God, just horrible, just horrible. And of course, you know, things are only going to get worse because we're going to get more circuits like this. It's obvious that the FIA, Liberty Media, they're going to they're gonna try and get more of these street circuits because street circuits, it's clear that this is the future. Street circuits are the future, definitely. And... When they say that they're going to, you know, put the European circuits on a rotational basis. Yeah, that means there'll be less of them. That means there'll be less of them. There's not still going to be uh, 24 with like 12 circuits in Europe. No, there, there'll be like 18 and about 8 in Europe in about 5 to 10 years time. And all the others, they'll all be street circuits. I guarantee you, they'll all be street circuits. And all at night with floodlights as well. Yes. And it's just, this is not the Formula One that I've loved since 1988. It just really isn't anymore. It's, the Emperor is fully naked and showing showing us everything because there's no, there's no way they can explain anything that happened in that race apart from just total bullshit. Total bullshit. It really was. I was... I was ashamed to watch it. I really was ashamed to watch it. 
Anyway, as always, thanks so much for watching, everyone. You've been awesome as always. And let me know in the comments what you thought about the fantastic Qatar Grand Prix. Thank you. Have a good evening.